My New Orleans, gay and romantic though it may be, has had more than a share of panic and disaster. There was the Great Plague of 47, and the Yellow Fever epidemic of 53, when death swept the city by tens of thousands. But they seemed small on the night the terror came to town, a frightening terror in the guise of a little man who called himself Mr. D, as in dynamite. turn Sodom into ashes, I will burn Gomorrah into dust. Mr. D is in dynamite. No, no, you can't do that, whoever you are. If you set that stuff off, half the transporter will go sky high. began at nearly three o'clock in the morning when the administrator of New Orleans urgently called me to his office to identify, of all things, a boat. Delta King, what about it? You tell me. A small cargo vessel carry about 200 bales of cotton at most. Hasn't run the river recently. Bill's refitting her. Who? William Devers. He owns her. Friend of mine. Well, what's she doing in Dominic Cove? Bill's plantation. He always moors her there. Hey, what's this all about? Captain, will you keep an eye on that boat? Yancey, come into my office. Thank you. Uh, close the door, Yancey. Captain Fry tells me the War Department has assigned him to you permanently. Yes, he's a good man. And you won't be needing me any longer as your underground agent. Of course I will. He can't go outside the law for evidence as you can. You know I work for you? No, and I don't want him to. But never mind Captain Fry. Let me explain the Delta King. Thought you never would. Yesterday around noon, this note was delivered to me by mail. I will turn Sodom into ashes. I will burn Gomorrah into dust. Signed, Mr. D is in dynamite. I know, I know. I receive hundreds of crank letters. So you're asking yourself, why is he so unduly disturbed about this one? Why is he? I wasn't until an hour ago. Yeah. I was upstairs in my quarters, foolishly dreaming that New Orleans had finally become a city of law and order, when I was awakened rather violently by this sailing through my window. I have come to smite mine enemies. Dominic Cove, Delta King, 3 a.m. Mr. D is in dynamite. Well. Don't you ever get any pleasant correspondence? Is that all you have to say? No, what time is it? It's almost three. Let's see if your Mr. D is bluffing. See anything? Nothing, not a soul. It's exactly three. Thank heavens, another empty threat. Did it. May I see the glass? Fantastic. 
fantastic. Unbelievable, I... What can it mean? It can mean a maniac is going to ransom the city of New Orleans. Ransom the city? We've got trouble, Mr. Colton. If I can be of any assistance to you, Captain. Thank you, Mr. Derringer, but I'm afraid this will be no job for amateurs. And I'm afraid, Captain, we're going to need all the help we can get. Come in. state of emergency. The arsenal has been looted. Two men are dead. May I accompany you, Mr. Colton? Of course. There was a brave man. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Ten cases of dynamite, Miss. Ten cases? That's enough to level the entire French Quarter. Maybe that's what Mr. D means by Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, where does one start? Logic, reason, they're useless in hunting a madman. We've got to start somewhere, sir. That's true, and if I were you, I'd start at the levee. The Mississippi's almost up to flood. Now, if Mr. D takes it in his mind to dynamite the levee, New Orleans might become just a muddy memory. Lieutenant! You will report to General Winchester immediately. Tell him I want every available soldier strung out along the levee for five miles above and below the city. Tell him I want anything that moves, anything, stopped and searched. I'll go along too, Mr. Colton. I'm wasting time. Yes, Captain. So little to go on, so very little. We have one thing. The Delta King has nothing to do with Sodom and Gomorrah. So why dynamite her? I don't know. Neither do I. Bill Deaver's boat. That's the one chink in her armor so far. Mr. Colton, with your permission, I'd like to alert the underworld. They usually see more than the law does. Besides, they'd like to stay in business, too. That's dangerous. Word leaks out, we could have a panic. Mr. D may not give you any choice. We were lucky. The press had not been informed by Mr. D, and the people of New Orleans went about their day in ignorance of their danger. Sorry. Are you all right? May I help you to your room? Hello, Francie. Don't move. Oh, where am I? In the charity hospital. You'll be all right, Yancey. It's mostly concussion and shock. But they did take an hour picking fragments of glass out of your back. Did you have any luck? No. I did. Maybe it's all worth it. I met Mr. D. The man's fantastic. His timing. The way he managed it. We were on our way to the King Louis when it happened. You got another note? Yes. I have come to level Babylon. King Louis, 10 a.m., Mr. D is in dynamite. Sure does cut it close. You know, he was hardly out of that room for a moment before the explosion. Well, I, 
Got to get out of here. You can't, Yancey. You're back. Francie, we're up to our necks in something far more important than my aching. Back, where are my clothes? They were cut to ribbons. Jeremiah brought you some fresh things in from Waverly. Thank you, Lieutenant. Woe to thee, O Moab. Deaver's warehouse, 2 p.m. Mr. D is in dynamite. We'd never make it. It's 2 o'clock now. Deavers, Deavers again. There's got to be a reason. This is the second time. Done it again? Francie, get to Mr. Deavers at once. Tell him to meet me at your club as soon as possible. He's got to have a clue for this. And you keep body and soul together until I get back. Go ahead, Mr. Colton. I'll catch up with you. Mr. Derringer? Would you come up to room 210? I have something very important to tell you. Please come in, Mr. Derringer. Thank you. I'm Barbara Kent. I was so surprised to see you on the street today after that awful explosion. I'm just lucky. I have a feeling we've met before. I don't think so. I'm sure I would remember. I've only been to New Orleans once before. And that was just a year ago. Well, I'm afraid that I was out of town at that particular time. The explosion this morning. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I saw him. Him. The man in 209. I was just coming out of this door when he slipped through his and locked it. He turned and, and waved a pistol at me. I was terrified. I jumped back inside to lock my door and, and saw him running down the stairs. You say that you definitely saw him run down the stairs? Yes. Yes, I saw him. And then the explosion. It was awful, wasn't it? Can you describe it? Not really. A little man. He looked middle-aged. And he had a wart. Right there. He moved awfully fast. I had just arrived in town this morning. It was all so unexpected. I'm sorry that New Orleans turned her frightened face for your arrival. Perhaps you'll allow me to show you her brighter side, her Sodom and Gomorrah, so to speak. You're very kind. But I should tell you, I, I'm a widow. I've just come from San Francisco to visit my husband's grave at Green Acres. I'm sorry. You couldn't know. Well, perhaps you'll allow me to drive you out there. No, thank you. It's a time for loneliness, in a sense. You see, today would have been our first wedding anniversary. May I offer you tea? No, thank you. We'll have to be going now. But thank you very much for your help. Good day. Good day. Girl, you watched the front of the hotel after the explosion. You didn't see the little man come out. There's no back way out of the hotel. Now, the clerk said he didn't see anyone come down the stairs. So why is the lady lying to us? I don't know either. Francie. What about Bill Devers? He's up at Havestock buying some horses. Won't be back for a week. That's bad luck. Why? Well, I think he's got the answer without knowing it. Yancey, what? No, later, Francie. Any more now? 
more notes? No, thank heavens. Since there doesn't seem to be any way we can stop Mr. D, we can only hope he stops himself. Well, I think I found something. A young widow arrived in town this morning. A young widow? Yancey, this is a nation of young widows. Each one has her share of bitterness, resentment, sorrow. No, I'm willing to grasp at straws, but... A vendetta is a crime of emotion. And a vendetta against a whole city is a supreme sick emotion. Now, she's in town to visit her husband's grave. It's their anniversary. There's nothing abnormal about that. No, but there could be. I've got Pahu following her. I wish you were following Mr. D. Now, Barbara Kent might just lead us to Mr. D. Barbara Kent, the actress? Oh, she played at the French Opera House last year. A brilliant performer. Monologues, pantomimes, a really great talent. You weren't back in New Orleans at that time. No, but that could just be it. I've seen her before, too, in Baltimore on the stage. I'll be back. Oh, Captain Fry, will you come with me? What is it? I think we're getting lucky. As long as we're grave robbing, let's simplify it. I think I have a pass key. Secret Service needs is more amateurs. It's just luck, Captain. Better get this stuff out the rig. Oh, no butterfingers. Ah, Yancey. Your hunch was right. Barbara can't escape from an asylum in San Francisco two and a half weeks ago. They notified all possible places she might go. They thought of us last. Can't blame them. She was only here once before. I'll have her placed in custody immediately. You mustn't do that, sir. What? Well, the captain is right. He's got men watching her wherever she goes. She's the only one that'll lead us to the little man. But what about the dynamite? We got the dynamite, most of it. She has one charge left. One is enough, Captain. I won't have any more lies on my conscience. Yes, but the dynamite is the only thing that'll bring the little man to her. Can't you see? I see, but I don't like it. Well, neither do I. Have you found out anything else? Have you found out anything about her husband? Yes. They were honeymooning here at the King Louis. She was tired. He wanted some fun, so he went down into the French Quarter alone at night. Some hold-up man tried to rob William Devers. Devers killed the robber and accidentally killed John Kent, too. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Captain Fry, will you deliver this for me, please? Dear Mrs. Kent, when you meet me at Madame Francine's club, I will await you there. Your servant, William Devers. Wait, I'll get it to him. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Fulton. This better work. Jeremiah, 
Come on. Come on. Into the back parlor. General, you too. Don't come out till I tell you. Upstairs, Opal. Pearl girl? Yancy. I haven't got time to explain. It better be a good one closing down my club for tonight. Pearl girl? I'll get it. Yancy, it's about the dynamite, isn't it? Yes, and I hope it's the last of it. Yes? Madam Francine, a gentleman left this bag for Mr. D. Hit the floor, Pearl! You all right? No. Pahu, Mr. Colton, room 210, King Louis Hotel. Thank you. Magnificent performance, Barbara. It's over. It's all over. Now think about it that way. It's over. Over. All over. But it can never be over. It can never be over. Oh, John. I told you not to go, never to leave me, to keep away from Sodom and Gomorrah. But you went and they killed you. They killed my heart. 